Hey guys and welcome back to my quilting series. Today we're going to talk about straight line quilting. Now there's lots of different ways to do this. I'm going to show you a couple that I like. This quilt behind me um, I did straight line quilting on and it's one of my favorite looking quilts. It's probably one of my least favorite things to do. Mainly because it's just not quite as fun as the free motion quilting um, and it takes a little bit longer and you're kind of working on straight lines and, and you know keeping things lined up and that kind of thing. I sort of prefer the meandering but actually I prefer the way that a straight line quilt finishes so you know go figure. Anyways I'm going to teach you how to do that today so what you're going to need for this is some kind of a walking foot. Usually this is much more helpful than using your quarter inch foot however I will say that I have I've cheated before and used my quarter inch foot to quilt, straight line quilt something, provided that it's not super thick. If you've got really thick materials and stuff, you're really going to want to go with a walking foot. You're also going to need a ruler for this one, or at least I use a ruler. You don't have to, but I'm going to show you how I use it and why. And then you're also going to need some practice batting, some practice fabric. Um, your machine girls quilting gloves again and then for this one I also mark that's why I'm using my ruler so you can either use um, I have a water soluble soluble pin here I also have these friction erasable pins which are really nice they they disappear with um, heat so you can iron them and then they just go away so if you're gonna do a small little wall hanging that's gonna be inside these are a fun and easy option you just have to run an iron over your little quilt when you're done and then it just disappears this one the water soluble will disappear in the wash. You could also use the bone folders which you kind of make a crease in your fabric and follow that as well. Whatever works best for you, you're welcome to go with. Um, I will give you one little warning on these friction pins. I love these. I use them all the time. However, they will reappear if your quilt gets um, cool. So like for example, my kids like to write letters on paper and then put them, iron it off and then they kind of pass it as a secret note and then that person can put it in the freezer and the writing will reappear. Now that will also happen on your quilt. So if you happen to be quilting something to send to quilt market or that's going to get shipped to a friend or anything like that, then you may want to resist using the friction erasable pins because your lines will show back up on your quilt. Now I've heard of people who have put them on the truck to ship and it's just cold enough in the truck that the lines reappear. I made a, um, a wall hanging for my husband's grandma and it's a track it's really cute. I wrote on the top of that quilt to quilt it just for the little um, handlebar for the tractor and then I you know hand embroidered it and ironed it off thought we were good to go and she has it hanging in her little entryway to her house and she actually lives on a farm. The entryway is kind of more of a um, not heated area. It's like it's a transition between the front door and her house and no joke my line showed back up and I just about died. She doesn't seem to care and she keeps it there even though I've told her maybe to move it inside but anyways just a heads up on the friction pins I love these I use them all the time they're great for seams that when you're never gonna see them even if they do get cold but just something to consider so let's head over to our machine and I'll kind of show you how we get started with this just quickly I wanted to kind of show you a close-up of this quilt behind me now there's lots of options when you're doing straight line quilting you can either do just literally straight lines up and down you can do horizontal ones I've also done just followed my um, border blocks as well and just done that. On this one I just went ahead and just followed a quarter of an inch all the way around the inside of this shape right here and then I also did vertical and horizontal stripes on these blocks and then I did the sashing just a quarter of an inch on both sides of my sashing. So the first thing you want to do when you're going to do a straight line quilting project is figure out where you want your lines on your quilt and whether you want to do what's called echo printing which is or echo quilting which is what I did around this where you're kind of following a shape or if you just want to do straight lines or I'm going to show you a fun option that most sewing machines have where it's technically you're doing straight line but it's just the wavy stitch on your machine and so you can put lots of waves in it and it's still straight line stitching so it's not super hard but you have a little bit more emotion so just something to consider before you get started all right, so I'm kind of set up over here. Now I've got a couple of things I want to show you. I already mentioned a walking foot. Now a walking foot isn't something that you have to have. It just helps because as you can see, it's got these um, little feet that are going to pull your fabric through on the top and then those will line up with the ones on your machine so you get pull from both top and bottom and it just helps when you're working with thicker materials. So I'll show you how to use that. Um, 
I also want to be honest and say that I've been kind of lazy and didn't feel like putting on my walking foot and so I have done straight line quilting with just my standard quarter inch foot and I just use my little quarter inch guide. That's how I did um, some of the projects that I'll show you at the end of this video, especially if it's a smaller project then I'll usually just leave my quarter inch foot on and just kind of go slowly. Um, for this kind of quilting I stay with the same kind of thread I always use which is 50 weight or fill 100% cotton thread. I'm just going to use a blue today so that you can kind of see my stitches. And then for the needles, I like these organ needles and I tend to use um, the 80-12 size. However, if you're starting to have a lot of breakage with your thread, you might want to go up to the 90-14 size because it has a little bit bigger of an eye and sometimes it will help your thread not get quite as caught. Now before I start quilting, I always put a brand new needle on my machine just so that I know that if I'm having troubles, you know, it's not from my needle. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm also going to go ahead and put my walking foot on my machine and just get us ready to go. The only other thing that I've done to prepare is take a white piece of fabric and put it on some batting just so that I can kind of practice with the thickness and I suggest you do that as well. I've attached my white fabric with some 505 basting spray. You can use pins if you prefer to pin. It's totally up to you. Uh, I think for the video purposes it's just easier. I do have a video on how to baste a quilt so if you missed that go back to my YouTube channel and check that out. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is get out my ruler and my pen and we're going to make some marks on our uh, just sample piece to just kind of follow along. All right so a lot of times if I don't have like patchwork to follow um, you know or a seam to follow then I'll go ahead and just draw on my lines. So one thing I forgot to mention was this little guy and this is kind of a handy um, measuring tool that you may may or may not have for your sewing machine. You don't have to have one but a lot of times I will use it to make an even amount of stitch distance between my stitches when I'm doing free motion quilting. So this bar actually sticks into the back of my presser foot on my sewing machine and then I can just put it at whatever distance I want my stitches to be separated and then you just use this little guide and say you had a stitch line right here you would just like say this was your stitch line, you would just run this down your stitch line as you sewed and then you would have a consistent distance between your stitches. So totally up to you. This is kind of a handy little tool and I do use it for um, straight line quilting. So if you want to do a diagonal line, one of the helpful things that your ruler probably already has on it is this 45 degree angle line and all you have to do is line that up with one of the edges of your quilt and then if you draw a line along the edge of your quilt right here will be an exact 45 degree angle on whatever project you have. So you don't have to be that precise. You can do kind of whatever you want. I just thought that might help out some of you. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on this piece here just as an example. And so what I'll probably do, I just have my friction pin that'll disappear with heat later. I think I've mentioned before but these will come back if your quilt item gets cold enough so just be careful um, you know, uh, of what you're you're using it on. But there's my first line on my quilt. Now I can either, like I said, just go off that line and put this in my machine and just do, you know, however much I want across. Or I can say, oh, I want them to be two inches or one and a half inches or whatever, and then draw myself another line to go off of. And you can do this across your whole quilt drawing lines. If I want to go the other direction and have lines going 45 degrees in the opposite angle. All I have to do is line up my ruler again and draw some lines this way. And again, I can do one and a half inches away and continue on that way. I'm not going to draw any more lines because I'm going to show you how to use this little tool as well. But that's usually what I'll do if I don't have seams that I'm going to be following is I'll go ahead and start with at least one or two um, kind of primary lines that I'm going to go ahead and follow on my piece. And you can make this as complicated or as simple as you want. All right, the other thing that you're going to want to kind of mess around with, and this is why we're doing a test piece, is your tension. If you're starting to have skipped stitches or like big loops on top or loops underneath, you're going to want to increase or decrease your um, top thread tension until you get it, your stitches looking nice and uniform on both sides. I know because I've used this machine for a while, I'm going to go ahead and increase mine up to a five. Four is my normal kind of everyday sewing uh, setting. And so I'm just going to increase it a little bit because I have some more bulk. And we're going to go ahead and get started. You'll want to just experiment with your machine, maybe even get out your manual and see what it recommends if you're going to be quilting on it. It might have some settings that you, that'll help you get your tension going. All right, now if you've never installed a walking foot, I just want to show you really quickly what that kind of entails. 
So there's usually a screw right here that you just need to kind of unscrew and then it will clamp onto here. This little plastic piece also needs to go across the bar that goes up and down as you're stitching. That's what's going to actually move the feet on your walking foot. So just make sure that you have that attached around here and I think you should be good to go but you'll definitely want to check your machine um, you know because they can vary. So for most of my straight line quilting I'm just going to use a straight stitch and for my machine it's just these double zeros and I can change my settings but it automatically changes these numbers here for me so it just has it set um, the stitch width doesn't really matter because you're just doing a straight line um, the stitch length is 2.4 you can kind of go with whatever's on your machine I know sometimes when people are doing quilting they'll actually increase to about a 3.0 stitch length just to make the stitches slightly longer you can kind of do whatever you think looks better for you so just experiment with that we're gonna go ahead and just do it with the the settings that come on my machine all right, so to do the straight line motion or the straight line quilting, you don't have to do anything really special other than potentially add this to your machine. Um, I have my feed dogs up, so they're just in their regular position that they're always in. And then all I've done is just line my needle up with the line that we drew on our sample piece here, and we're going to just kind of start going. Now I do go. This is a little bit fast. It kind of depends on how thick my material is. But as you can see, it's just doing straight line stitch. you could also do a zigzag or something like that you're just going to want to make sure that um, what if you're doing like a more decorative kind of type of stitch that your needle isn't going to hit anything on your free motion foot so let's see how that looks all right there we go um, and we just have a nice straight stitch. The other thing I'll usually do is flip it over and just check my backside to make sure that my stitches are looking okay and I don't have any you know skipped stitches or loopy things or anything like that all right, the next thing I want to kind of show you, now I've already drawn a line here. Um, one thing that I found with straight line stitching is it can kind of push your fabric, so whichever way you're sewing, it can push the fabric this way. So if I've done a line this way, often what I'll do is turn my work around and then come back and do the line in the opposite direction. That kind of helps with the slippage of your fabric so that you don't get all of it getting pushed down to one end. And then by the time you get down to this end, you've got kind of like a big uh, you know, bulgy pile of fabric at the end. So I just like to kind of swap that out um, directionally if I can, um, and that just kind of helps keep your your fabric a little bit straighter. Because I have found that with straight line stitching, it can really push quite a bit more um, than if you're doing free motion quilting. So let's do this other line here, and we're just going to do the same thing. If your machine is having a hard time, just slow down and go a little bit slower. You don't have to blaze through it like I am. Or if you're having a hard time staying on your line. Okay. And usually when I'm doing um, straight stitching, I'm actually starting from edge to edge. If for some reason you need to start in the middle of a project, like say you want to start right here, um, I will actually drop my needle down and pull up the bobbin thread just so that I've got thread the thread on the top side and it's kind of tiny here because I just cut my stitch there but you can see hopefully that I've pulled that up from the bottom I'll move both of these out of the way and then try and drop my needle back in the exact same spot and then I'll put my presser foot down and I can kind of take a couple stitches just to secure that and then keep going. Um, I do that so that I don't have threads popping out in the back side. Um, that way when I'm done I just can clip all the threads off of the top and I know that those little stopping and starting points are nice and secure. Alright, the other thing I just want to show you quickly because free motion quilting is relatively um, you know, simple, there's not really a whole lot else to show you, is how to use the tool that we were talking about before. So now I have this tool right here, and this is just a guide tool that you can pretty much get for any sewing machine. And this one fits in a little hole back here in my presser foot. And all I have to do then is decide how far away I want it. I can be specific and measure, or I can just use this 
guide and just say, okay, I want it to be about this far apart. And then I'll keep this guide right here on my previous stitch line. And then when I go to create this one, you'll see I don't have a line drawn for it. But as long as I keep my guide over here on my previous stitch line, I should have a relatively straight and consistent quilting line next to that one when we're done. And so here you can see, I didn't measure it with this one, but here you can see we've got a nice consistent line and then we can just go back. I would again turn my work at this point, but for sake of the video, I'm not going to. Um, we can just go back, put it on the one we just did and then continue on. And that just saves time for marking. Um, it also leaves less mark on your quilting project. Um, you know, that you have to worry about, like with pin marks showing back up and whatnot. Um, I do have one other tool that I have used before to mark items if I'm worried that they're going to, um, the pen marks might show up later. If I'm not, like, especially if it's a wall hanging, I'm not going to wash it or whatever. Um, I have this old making memory. This is just a bone folder, and they actually do sell quilt, um, quilting markers that are essentially made out of the same material. But if you press a line, on the fabric and let's see if I can get you to see that so hopefully you can see my crease line it's right here I can see it really well so that is another great way of marking your quilts now these will kind of disappear so if you mark this today and then say come back in you know three or four days to quilt it these lines will probably have kind of come out but it is a nice solid line and you can just use this like a pen put your ruler up on your fabric like this and then just mark right along it and then bam you've got a line to follow that's not going to be quite so um, obvious later on you know on the top of a quilted project all right so as you can see this little guide just fits right into the back of there's a hole right back here in the back of my walking foot and I just push it right in there and then I can adjust it to whatever length I want obviously within the length of the rod here but you can do quite close stitches you can um, make them quite far apart so this just helps um, it, it guide you so that your stitches are a little bit straighter I've had this move around I mean it's pretty tight in there I've had it move around a little bit if I have a huge quilt and it just kind of gets knocked around by the weight of the quilt but for most um, purposes this little guide really helps out and it saves me from having to draw a lot of lines on my fabric so I'm gonna go ahead and just continue on this is our other line that we drew over here just so you can kind of see what it looks like Now one of the things that I'll do, especially if I have a large quilt, is I'll kind of stop at the end here. I'll lift, my needle is in the down position. I'll lift it up, travel down the edge of my quilt where you're not going to see it because if you're doing a real project here, you'll have some extra batting out here. That's usually where I'll kind of travel. I'll travel down to my next stitch line here. Lift it up. And this is the one I marked with the bone folder. You probably can't see it on here, but I can. So we're just gonna go down that one. And there you go. That way you don't have all these little extra threads. Um, however, it does waste a little bit of extra thread if you're gonna be traveling a lot like that. So it's just kind of a, you know, something, it's up to you. You can do it or not. I just wanna kind of show you some options here. And I'm really just eyeballing this here, but there we go. Look at that. Perfect. So now I'm in line with my previous stitch line, and I can just kind of keep on going. All right. And there you have it. As you can see, you can make a fun little pattern quite quickly using this um, method. And it looks like you did a lot of work. It's actually quite easy. And usually, like I said, you can actually do it without buying anything special for your machine. You can certainly mark your lines. And I've done it with my um, quarter inch foot as well. So, you know, it, it definitely pushes more with your quarter inch foot. But like if you're in a bind and you don't want to spend, because these, these walking foot um, feet are actually somewhat expensive depending on the brand that you have to buy. The one thing when you are if you do want to buy one to look for is to make sure that the feet on the walking foot 
um, match up with the feet on your machine. That is basically what is going to help pull your fabric through. If they don't line up and you've bought the wrong brand, then the top is going to be of no use. It's just going to be kind of pulling against nothing. So what happens when these go down here is that those feet also go down. And as you can see right there, they're lining up with the feet on my machine and they're pulling it through all at once. So that's what you're looking for if you're going to be wanting to buy one. Hopefully your um, sewing retailer can help you out and make sure that you get the right one for your machine. Or if you just look online and get one that's specifically for your machine, that's another way to go. One other fun stitch I wanted to show you is you can see right here my number 39 is this kind of S curve. Um, you can do what's called straight line stitching but with that S curve and you're going to get some fun waves in your quilt. I know a lot of people who do that and it has like a really kind of cool effect so I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. All right, so we're going to try something a little bit more fun now. I showed, I told you I would show you the kind of wavy stitch. Um, I've changed my machine over to my number 39 wavy stitch and I've increased my stitch length um, and you can increase or decrease it just you know to get to a pattern that kind of looks good to you i put mine at 4.0 so i should be getting this nice big kind of s curve going on now if i want to have it be a little bit tighter i can go down to like let's say 2.8 and see what that looks like all right let's see what that looks like so as you can see now, we've got this kind of S curve going on instead of a straight line. And I did it a little bit tighter down here. This is a 2.8 up here. This is a 4.0. So you can kind of just mess with the stitch length just to get a different size kind of curve. And that just makes it a little bit fancier. It's still technically considered straight line quilting because you're really kind of using that method, but it does kind of give a little bit more added interest to your quilt. So that's another option as well. And a lot of home sewing machines will have a kind of a stitch like this. So that just gives you a little bit more added interest. If you want something a little, little fancier, you're not quite ready to try the um, free motion quilting yet. And then if I'm gonna do that, I'll use my guide over here and just do my best to keep it in the middle of those waves. And there you go. Now you've got something a little bit more interesting than just the regular straight lines and still fun to do. All right, so as you can see, we've got some fun little crosshatch quilting lines going on and it hardly took us any time at all. So I really encourage you to try this type of quilting, especially if you're not quite ready to try the free motion quilting. Now, the only last step you would have to do for this is if you use the friction marking pin or water soluble marking pin or whatever, is to either hit this with an iron or damp the water soluble, uh, um, you know, pat the water soluble ones with a damp cloth to get the lines off and you're good to go. So I just wanted to show you a couple things that I've used straight line quilting on. Now you've already seen the quilt at the beginning of this video, but I made this fun little laptop bag for myself and I just did some diagonal stitching here. Hopefully you can see it. I'll try and do a little bit more up close so you can see what I'm talking about. All right. So I just took my ruler and just drew some, I actually just drew one line and then I used my measuring a piece on my sewing machine to just do a continuous or consistent spacing in between and I just did um, like diagonal lines on this particular piece so you can be more complicated or do something you know uh, super easy and it still looks just as good so that is one of the things Here's another fun um, little mini quilt project that I made for my daughter. I did a whole quilt out of these cakes and this is actually a free pattern from Fat Quarter Shop. It's from their um, Snapshops Quilt Along and so you can get that from their website. And then on the back side I just used this cheetah print um, from Pam Kitty and I didn't even draw lines for this one. I actually just did a quarter of an inch away from the squares in the back of this cheetah print and I did vertical lines and then I also did horizontal lines and so when it's done you kind of have a cute little uh, crisscross pattern on your quilt and it was actually really super easy to do. I didn't have to have any special sewing machine attachments or anything. Here's kind of a close-up of the crosshatch quilting that you can kind of hopefully see probably more on these darker blocks. 
but like I said I didn't even draw any lines or anything I just followed the pattern on here and you can do this if you have um, done a patchwork quilt as well you don't even have to draw lines just follow your seam allowance and do like a quarter to a half inch away from your seam allowance and I did horizontal and vertical just to make it kind of fun but you can really kind of play around with the straight line quilting Here's another little fun project that I did some straight line quilting on, and this is also a tutorial on my YouTube channel, so you can go check that out, um, or on my blog. And I just did straight line quilting. I just pieced these three little pieces together, added some batting, and then just did straight line quilting across them, and then just used that finished piece to make this cute little bag. Here's another fun little project that I did some straight line quilting on and I just quilted the pieces before I put my little bag together and there's actually a tutorial on this um, on my blog. It's super easy and fun to make but that's just another option for straight line quilting. Alright, the last project I want to show you is this fun little book cover and I also have a free YouTube video on that as well but I just patchworked the cover, the outside cover and then I just used that like I did on the one I just showed you and just did some straight line quilting both vertical and horizontal just to make it kind of a fun little patchworky book cover and this fits like a regular journal like those composition notebooks and then I just added some pockets on the inside so it can slip in and bam you have a super cute fun little project so if you're afraid to try free motion quilting I suggest you do like a smaller or straight line quilting I'm sorry I suggest you do a smaller project and just give it a try I think you'll find it's really easy fun and fun and it can really um, kind of spruce up your projects and just give them a little bit more finished um, and decorative touch. So those are my tips for straight line quilting. I hoped it helped some of you and inspired you to do some of your own. As I mentioned before, I do have fun giveaways for my video series. And today's video giveaway is sponsored by Fat Quarter Shop. It's this awesome 3.5 by 12.5 inch Creative Grids ruler. And if you watched my supplies video, then you'll know that I love the Creative Grid rulers. I like that the lines are nice and thin and easy to see. And they also have the little grippies on the back so they don't slip around a lot. So these are a great asset to have in your sewing kit. So if you want to enter to win this ruler, then I'll link my blog post below and you can head over there and enter to win today's giveaway. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you for the next one.